Fresh and Famous Radio. Fresh and famous conquering the radio waves and the world, man. This is a beginning to life. This is going to be a crazy, crazy year for all of us. Uh, right now, we have a comedian, and she's on MTV Girl Code representing Esther Koo. What's the deal? What's the deal, J.O.? How you doing? I am good. I am good. What's Sai? Do people still call you the Asian Sarah Silverman? Um, that's only like in online forums and chat rooms and shit, I think, or I think that's on my Wikipedia, actually, somebody wrote that, but anybody can like change anybody's Wikipedia, can't they? <laughs> they can. Yeah, I mean, you just need, you just need Wi-Fi, internet connection, and, uh, you gotta know how to type, so somebody called me that when I was on Last Comic Standing, I guess just because of like my delivery or whatnot, but, um, but yeah, people, I don't hear that so much, um, anymore. But that's not that not that it's an in- insult. I mean, Sarah Silverman's hilarious, you know. Yeah. Have you ever met her before? Yeah, I have met her. Um, I've done a show um, at the Eastville Comedy Club in New York. She was there with Todd Berry, and she watched my set. And um, then I saw her at the Stripes Club. Yeah, I've I've met her. I've never smoked weed with her, but next time I see her, I'm like, maybe she doesn't know that I smoke weed. Maybe, maybe I'll I'll offer up a bowl. Maybe you might like <laughs> that. I bump I into her. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. How big has your fan base grown after your uh, your your uh, your gig on Last Comic Standing? Um, well, I got on Last Comic Standing. My fan base was sort of like limited to middle aged, um, creepy guys with Asian fetishes. <laughs> um, but now, now that I'm on Girl Code, um, I am ever so grateful that my fan base has grown. To like teenage girl, college girl fan base, you know, because that's really, you know, who I am. I'm just this teenager at heart, right. you know, who's still trying to, you know, become popular. Become popular. <laughs> how, how did the, how did you get the gig on Girl Code? Like, what did they tell you? <clears throat> um, you know, it, it was just out of a uh, a regular old audition. I I went to New York, and they were like, "Well, you know, there's a show, Girl Code." And they gave me, like, four topics, like frenemies, waxing, and mm-hmm. something else. And they were like, yeah, just, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And and then you just get, you know, you just talk. And, you know, I prepared some jokes, but then I just also riffed. But my audition was so cool because it was, like, such a laid-back audition. There were, like, three girls who had literally just graduated from college. Like, they couldn't be more than, like, 23 years old, you right. know, because everybody at MTV is just so young. Mm-hmm. So it was just like I was. I walked in there. I was like, "There's no adults here. Like, this is it. Like, where's your supervisor?" They're like, "Oh, we're running this." I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool." Wow. <laughs> so I just made them laugh, and they were like, "Hey, you're on board." I was like, "Awesome." And did you ever expect to be on MTV? You know what I mean? Because before, like, with the you know the whole TRL and they had like different things on MTV that were just actually had to do with music. But now it's more like you know reality and you know what i mean you have videos every now and then but did you ever expect to see yourself on mtv where you or were you just like you know growing up like you know what i want to be on mtv i want to be on whatever's out right now you know i i had no expectations of being on mtv i wasn't even really aware of like what mtv entailed like because I didn't grow up with cable TV, you know? Because, mm. like, everybody else that I talked to, they're like, oh, MTV was my shit, it was my jam when I was growing up. I would watch the music videos on there. And I'm like, well, my parents barely even had a TV in the living room most of the time, mm. you know, let alone cable TV. So, you know, I'm I'm reading about MTV now. Like, there's this book out called um, I Want My MTV. Mm. That, that's been, like, such a great educational tool. I Want like, My I'm MTV? Like, oh, this, I never like, heard of that. Yeah, there's an amazing book called I Want My MTV, and um, this writer, he's like a writer for like, um, uh, I forgot, Rolling Stones or something, and he basically compiled all these interviews with like Stevie Nicks, with Journey, with, you know, all the executives of MTV, like back in the 80s, back when music videos were Mm -hmm. big, Mm -hmm. Um, and it just like chronicles like all the like coke binges, like them making all these crazy music videos, the crazy budgets that they were on, mm. and the insanity of it. Um, and, and I'm just, like, learning of the history of it now. So now I'm completely honored to be 
on MTV because it's such a, you know, legendary network with, like, such a rich history of, like, insanity. <laughs> Definitely. I feel it. I feel it. And you're also on a Wild and Out as well. You know, how did you get that gig? Because it's not, honestly, you know, I haven't seen a lot of Asian comics out there. You know what I mean? So how do you get the gigs, like, Wild and Out and, you know, you already told us about Girl Code, but, like, Last Comic Standing, how do you, you know, how do you reach out to these kind of people and, and actually be accepted onto the shows? Um, actually, I got really lucky with Marla now. I was performing at a comedy show that was a Girl Code showcase in New York, mm -hmm. and a producer for Wild and Out was in the audience. Mm -hmm. And she came up to me and was like, I want you to audition for Wild and Out, you know? So I went to L.A., um, and at first I was like, I don't even, I've never even seen Wild and Out. Like, I, I don't know if I'm, like, urban enough to get on the show. Mm -hmm. I don't rap. But then I started watching, like, videos on YouTube on how to rap and started, like, you know, just looking at a dictionary and just, like, freestyling off of, like, the rhyming dictionary and stuff. And um, and I went and I auditioned um, in L.A. I had to, like, rap on freestyle on Nick Cannon. And we had, like, that was, like, the most insane audition I've ever been on. Like, we're in the audition room for, like, two hours. Mm -hmm. It was basically, like, an improv class with Nick Cannon being our teacher. And we played a bunch of improv games. And it was so great because in the waiting room, usually when you're in the audition waiting room, you're just sitting there, like, staring at your headshot and twiddling your thumbs, like, being nervous. Mm -hmm. But in this waiting room, one of the comedians started, like, warming us up and was like, hey, you guys want to do some warm-up games? And we were all like, yeah. And we just started, like, warming up. And that's really what helped me when I went in the audition room, you know? Nice. Then, uh... I went in there and um, and and I, I did my raps on Nick Cannon. Let me try to think of a. I could do one of my raps right now if you want. Yeah, I gotta hear this. <laughs> so, you know, because I write songs. I have my my parody songs up on YouTube, but um, mm -hmm. I'm totally new to rapping. But um, what is it? I say, Nick Cannon, you call yourself Mr. Showbiz, but you more like Mr. Whip or something. I I forget what I said, Mr. Whip. but. At the time, it worked. Was he like? Was he like? Like on you? Like was he just like, damn? Like you know? Like you were really dope, or was he just like, ah? Eh. No, he was really on me. Like he he like freestyled back at me, you know, because I was like, I better just go because you know, we were all we were split into two teams, mm -hmm. and we were all like freestyling on on the other team. But I was like, I better go in on Nick Cannon just to show them that like I'm not intimidated that he's in the room, you know? Right. Did you think, so, did you, did you, did you think was he was? Cool. Did you think he was sexy? Um, <laughs> you can tell us. Come on, this is fresh and famous. <laughs> yeah, he's sexy. Um, you know, I like uh, I like skinny guys myself because I'm skinny. So, like for me, I don't like guys who are like all big and bulky. So in person, you know, he's actually really like his waist is skinny. You know, but his upper body is like all um buff so mm. i could i could use his lower half but not his upper half <laughs> just take just take the lower half with you and you can you're good yeah you know i like i like to pick and choose you know <laughs> my guys like are, are you are you like do you like a lot of black guys because you know asians you know they they have a thing for black guys. and i i remember you said a joke on uh i forgot but i heard it i was watching it the other day and you were like um oh my god you said your mom dated a black guy she was like no no what oh what was it i i can't remember but you said something about your mom dated a black guy and something of that matter but you know um is, is that your type or are you are you do you like white, white oh, guys um, <laughs> do you remember do you remember what i'm talking about yeah 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 my mom actually never dated that black guy it was a joke, joke yeah but, um but um you never know what's real in a comedian's act right? yeah exactly so exactly. But, um, I mean, I, I don't date black guys just because, like, a lot of black guys are, like, too big, you know? <laughs> like, um, you guys all wear magnums and shit, and I need, like, the opposite. So, I <laughs> I date, I date like, uh, like Latino guys right now mm -hmm. um, because they're kind of, like, in the middle, you know? They're not as, like, boring as white guys, but at least they have a little flavor, you know? <laughs> Why you think white guys are boring? Um, because they are. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. We got Esther Koo right here on Fresh and Famous with J.O. How long have you been uh, playing the guitar for? You know, the guitar, I picked up like a couple years ago. I 
don't know, maybe like four years ago. Wow. Or something. I'm like still, yeah, I'm still new to it. But you're and good it's at not it. My main instrument. Oh, well, thanks. Um, 